Hello, hello, and happy Thursday, everybody. So we are doing question and live here with Jen Carrasco. And um, I'm excited to, to help out and start the day for you guys. So let's go on to our first question that we have today. And the question comes from Nadia. And it says, I live in the Chicago land area and I want to go off on my own to a bigger salon and rent out chairs, suites. Only problem is I am not showing enough of my money to buy something on my own just yet. I was wondering what do I have to do to get there? Open a bunch of credit cards under my name, business description and background. I am a hairdresser and I want to expand my salon to a bigger salon with chairs and rent them out. Um, so the question that I'm getting here is the only problem I am having is not showing enough of my money to buy something on my own yet. So I am assuming that you're not showing enough income on your own to qualify for a larger unit is what I'm, what I'm thinking. So um, with that question is, it's a tricky question that all of us entrepreneurs have to deal with um, because in order to buy anything, right, we need to show proof that we are paying ourselves. So my, my question to you is you need to make sure that you're paying yourself so then that way you can prove of the income. Now there's another way to go around it. Sometimes a lot of, of renters want to rent you a unit and they'll look at what your overhead is for your business as well. So they'll take in your business as well as your personal debt to income ratio, if that makes sense. Um, another thing of my question is for you is maybe what you're trying to say is you don't have built up enough credit, meaning like your credit isn't big enough to be able to qualify for that, which might be your other question. And with that question, my suggestion is I'm not a financial advisor, but I know very, very well kind of what to do to build your credit. So by getting a bunch of credit cards is not necessarily the key goal or what you what you want to do, but what you want to do is you should always have three revolving credit cards, okay? Those credit cards should only be maxed out as a 10% every month. Now, I'm not a financial advisor, so, you know, or a credit guru. It's just what I've learned over a period of time. So by doing that, putting 10% on your cards every month and then paying them off every month, keeping your debt ratio down starts to build your credit up and you get more credit and it and it builds that number up, right? Um, so that would be my suggestion for you for the credit. Um, also just making sure your debt to income i hope this helps you if the question is a little bit different than where i'm helping you at please message in this comment and i would be happy to actually message back to you and help you with any questions with that because i i want to make sure that i'm answering your question 100 percent. because you have that question which means other people are going to have that same question on top of that so the next question i have is from carrington crothers and it says how do you know if having a business partner is the right decision for your business. Business background is, I am a commercial product photographer. And the other day I had someone approach me with a pitch to partner with me on my business. I know they have a solid photography background, but don't know how to know if and when those decisions are made are the positions where my business is slowly starting to take shape and get traction. But this pitch coughed me off guard 
and I don't know what to think about it. So you need to, you really need to think a little bit hard on what you want for your future. The reason why you say that is because your business is your baby, right? You built your business from your passion. And the thing is, is that you need to look at it at a couple different ways. What is your end goal of the company? What, what do you want from your company, right? Do you, do you want to be working into the company day in, day out going forward? Do you want to merge with somebody else to where um, you're not having to, to do the day in and day out every single day just yourself? But then you also need to look at the fact of, do I want to merge somebody into my company that is going to tell me how to run my company or what to do? The reason why I say that is that you can build your company together and have contracts, you know, in place, but you also want to make sure you're not, you didn't build your company and you're getting traction. You're having somebody come in to where you could possibly lose that traction or lose the company over something going forward. So you really need to take a broader look at if this aligns with your company, what your vision is, and what you want out of your company going forward. The reason why I say that is because I will never myself let anybody involved in my company to be a partner with me, maybe shares of the company eventually, um, because it's my company and I want control of the company and what happens to the company in the future. And so you really need to look at it from a perspective of what do you want from your in game of your company. So I hope that this helps you with that. Um, the next question is from Monica Redleaf. And it says, what are ways to validate your business idea, business description? I'm trying to validate a business idea, which in some type of ring or bracelet to identify available single people looking for love out and about in the everyday lives. My original plan was to get feedback from 100 people and I have been unsuccessful at reaching 100 single people. Any fast yet effective ways to move forward? I actually have some really good ideas for you. Um, I personally think that you could do a couple options. You could um, find a couple people that are single that you Realm, that you can give them the rings, have them, you know, wear the rings, talk about them, um, kind of hype up your business, right? And you can use that in social media to to repost, to get engagement, um, have people excited about what you're trying, what you're trying to accomplish, and what you're trying to accomplish for other people. Um, or another thing you can do too is you can have, I mean, you can have that part of it, but then you can also have another part to where you actually engage on social media about your idea and what people think of your idea and um, really get traction behind that idea and um, repost that and share it and envision it and um, get people's feedback from that um, there's also a great way that you could do, um, I know like MailChimp has it, JotForm has it, to where you can get people to go into us, you know, and write like a doc of yes, they agree with you or no, they agree, don't agree. I think you can even do it on Google uh, or uh, the Google Forms and you can put like a pop-up quiz for people and maybe... I don't know, they get a percentage off a ring or something like that if they turn in that JotForm quiz 
Um, but I would definitely hype it up and ask people on social media what they think of it and get engagement back from that. But also um, have somebody be like your advocate, have somebody be wearing it and um, kind of spruce it up and and make a fun li- little commercial about it or you know something for social media. I actually think that's a great idea. Um, it's kind of you, nobody would think of it, and um, if it gets traction, it could push really well. So um, I, you know, I, I think you have a great idea. Um, the next question I have is from Kristen Pitt. And the question is, how do I learn to be happy in the present, enjoying the journey? So business background, struggling to stay patient. Every entrepreneur struggles to stay patient, honey. Um, I want my 10-year plan to be here already. Things are going great and progressing on course, no issues, yet I feel depressed and I'm broke. I want to be happier. So this is an analogy that I I say to a lot of my uh, mentoring clients, and I'm mentoring one uh, country singer as we speak right now, and she's doing phenomenal, right? And she she's marking off all the things. She has her tasks. She's doing her sixty days. She's doing you know her thirty day goals, and in the thing that I I tell her is. When you get to that point of your AKA success of where you think you want to be, when you get there, there's going to be another level. You're never going to be 100% happy. That is the entrepreneur journey. So what we need to do is we need to live every day and enjoy it because When you get to that point that you think you're going to be happy, you're going to want a next level. That's with everything in life, right? So I'm a fitness competitor, right? Well, I want to be that A-shape ready for my show in a month, but I know it's going to take me three months to get to that point, right? So why don't I sit back and enjoy everything? every day as it comes because when that day comes what is going to be my next goal after that right there's going to be another goal it's never going to be over with so what i tell you is when i first started my business i wanted everything that i have right now right now i'm looking 22 years later And I have everything that I wanted back then, but now I need something different. I want a different goal, but I want that different goal now, right? Because that's an entrepreneur. But what I've learned is we have to enjoy the journey to get there. That's the point of life. The point of life is to enjoy every single day to get to the journey to the next. What... I realize is sometimes when I get depressed and I get unmotivated and I think, oh, I'm not there yet. I can't believe I'm not there yet. I reflect and I think, what can I do to help somebody else out today? And it changes the focus from me to helping somebody, which pushes me further in my businesses with what I want to do because I'm out trying to help other people. I'm not sulking in why am I not there yet. So I'm going to give you a little advice that every morning you wake up, you write your gratitude list of what you're grateful for. Five things, just five things you're grateful for. Five to do's that you're going to do that day or what you need to get done. Then I want you to write five affirmations of your future version of yourself. And then I want you to focus on who you're going to help going forward in your company. I'm telling you, it's going to make a huge difference for you. And I hope that helps. The next question I have is from Carrington Crothers. And it says, 
What is the best way to handle an upset client over an invoice reminder? Business description. I am a commercial product photographer and I have an automated email sent out reminding a client their invoice was coming due. This email was not well received. The client is pissed and the marketing manager with the company emailed me, asking me to email the owner and apologize for sending the reminder. What is the best course of action to take in situations like this? So everybody's different and you have to understand that some people, um, when you get your business to a certain point where um, an invoice is is going to upset somebody, and and I don't mean this in a bad way, but if you don't need that client anymore and that client is a headache, but you're doing enough income, you really need to start to value what clients you want to work with and uh, what you allow in your space, right? But when you're first starting your company, I know a lot of people kind of just take what, what they can getting started, right? So if a client is upset about an invoice that's getting sent to them before the invoice is due, I would just contact that client. I would apologize for that and just let them know that that's how your QuickBook runs or, or whatever you use um, and redo that invoice so it only comes due on the day that they get it. But honestly, um, I don't see what the big deal is on that, but I'm not in their standpoint. So um, I would definitely call them. I would talk them through it. Um, I don't necessarily would apologize to them, but I would let them know that that is just how your um, invoicing goes out and that you'll change it going forward for them. Um, they should be pretty reasonable on that. So the next question I have is from Ricardo Delgado. And it says, how can I start a company culture and build your employees to follow culture? I'm looking to build up professional barbers within my barbershop. The business description of the question, I'm building my brand business into a culture. I want to have my employees build their careers with a company. I'm having trouble finding where to market and we benefit and uh, what we benefit if they join us. Um, this is actually one of my specialties. Um, I am actually an EOS implementer and I have built uh, several companies with culture. So culture is huge. Culture is your core values. So I am going to highly, highly recommend that you read the book Traction uh, by Gina Wickman and also check out uh, Get a Grip. The reason why I say that is because it's gonna help you to, to somewhat build that culture with your company. So the one thing that you need to think of is you need to make sure that you sit down, you come up with your core values for your company. I'm a huge, strong believer in core values. Your core culture, right? So you have your core values, but what is the culture for your company that harbors those core values. That's huge. When you get that structured, then what you need to do is make sure that you're always talking about your core values. If it's posting them up on the wall, um, and then that's going to get that culture driven of what you want in your company and your in your teams. And you're gonna hire and fire by that, right? You're going to hire them making sure that they have your core values, they're the right people, they're in the right seats, they're doing their jobs, they have your core structure. And I'm going to highly recommend that you be doing quarterly meetings with everybody. And when you have your quarterly meetings, your quarterly meetings, meetings are going to address your core values and your core focus. And what I do in my companies is... Whenever I have my quarterly meetings, I will go over my core values. I will dictate my core values, meaning like we always do the right thing. 
you know, I noticed that John was walking by a pile of trash and he picked it up and threw it in the garbage because he was doing the right thing. So you see how I used it in context for them. Then what I do is if I have them use that in context. So I don't, I don't personally say, okay, all our five core values, I want each single person to say it, but I'll say, I'll say, hey, Jeff, give me a description of what our core value is. And he'll do it and he'll do it in a description. And then I reward him with something. Like I give them a gift certificate for something. And then what that's doing is that's getting everybody to understand your core values your core focus, what you want in the company, and then now you start creating that ambiance in your company. And that is how you should always start every company because everybody's on the same path as what your vision is for your business. So I hope that helped you. Um, I really look forward to these and I want to say thank you and I hope that I helped you guys today a little bit more. Um, have a phenomenal weekend and um, keep pushing hard, you guys. It, it it takes some time to get where you need to get. But let me tell you, when you get there with all the struggle and the hard work, when you finally get there, it's worth it. It makes all of those days that are extremely hard worth it. So keep pushing, okay? Have a phenomenal, phenomenal Thursday.